because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Modern Mystics and Happy Father's Day with a capital F. <laughs> Say hello to Nicholas. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Well, yeah, Andy and I were just, just been joining about our show this week, just connecting about it. And, and there was a theme of communication that was at least coming up really for me that I just felt was it's really part of my healing right now and it seems to be showing up everywhere for me. Um, so I felt inspired to just at least start us off with, with this theme because yeah, just as Andy and I were talking, I was just seeing like, wow, there's, there's been a lot for me, like really within that theme, there's discernment. Um, there's basically like, you know, what is the communication for? There's a purpose. There's not making assumptions was kind of like the sub theme I felt of that. And, you know, along with that, just like, how, how are things being communicated? Is it being like direct? Is it being actually clear and, you know, really from the heart or is it, is the communication actually being used as a defense actually to disrupt, um, you know, or delay, you know, like sarcasm is what, was coming up as my mind is one of those examples where there's actually a lot of fear. Like sarcasm is actually, it's not a form of communication. It's, there's an, there's kind of this attack because there's fear. It's a way of uh, masking anger while still, I guess, attempting to communicate, but really it's, it's a defense. It's a block. And, and just, yeah, for, for whatever reason, for at least last year now, I felt very like sensitive in my mind with, sarcasm as soon as i notice it my mind goes like whoa what is going on here because i guess i've been so used to just so much direct communication with with my mighty companions and everything that when someone's not being direct or clear with me i you know like what's what's going on here (laughs) um but i just yeah there's this one section in the in the light of communication that i was just opening up to and i felt inspired to uh listen to last night and there's just one line that really caught my eye here, and it, and it says, you have regarded the separation, you know, not feeling connected with God, uh, as a means for breaking your communication with your Father. You who speak in dark and devious symbols do not understand the language you have made. It has no meaning, for its purpose is not communication, but rather the, dis- the disruption of communication. If the purpose of language is communication, how can this can this tongue mean anything? So I don't know. That just kind of really stuck out to me, and it just comes down to kind of purpose. It's like, what is any communication for? It's to feel a connection. It's to feel like you're joined. You're in the same purpose. You're together, and and that's really what it's all about. I mean, I think he, Jesus even says in the course somewhere, just around. Uh, I think he's referring to like. Uh, you know, calling someone on the phone and really what he comes down to is that he's saying like, what is it for? You know, are you trying to connect with your brother or sister or are you calling them to, to basically attack, to (laughs) kind of chew, chew it out. And, you know, there's just this theme, this thought of like, I was thinking nowadays, I've seen a lot of people talk about how they might be like in a relationship or even, you know, they're about to go to bed and now they've got like their phones and, you know, they're just maybe looking on social media and everything. And, and yet there's total, there's a total disconnect. And, you know, I, I even had the thought, well, like, actually, this has always been going on. If it wasn't phones now, it used to be 
books or newspapers or different things, but everything was being used as actually a block to communication, a block to feeling connected. And it really always comes down to that all that can be used. Everything can be used, but it always comes down to purpose. You know, what is it for? And, you know, just not, just not assuming with anything. You know, I had this recent example with, with a mighty companion here. We were on our way to Home Depot to buy some supplies uh, for the yard. I've been working on the sprinkler system here. And we were like halfway there. I don't know, about a 20 minute drive. And, and I had heard before we left, ask if they have the credit card. <laughs> But I was like, well, this, they, they always have, you know, they're always very clear. They've always got it. Like, I don't need to speak, you know, it's like, I'm just being like, I'm over communicating. <laughs> There's no need. We get halfway there. And then, and then I think, uh, yeah, she asks like, so you've got the credit card, right? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought you had it. So we had to turn around. I could just see that it was just this call to like communicate. And actually, it's quite rare that we can over communicate you know, especially even in this community, in this community, it's like the default is communicate. And then if it's, you know, too much or not relevant or whatever, like it'll be spoken to, but really there's such, there's such an avoidance of it because there's such a fear of, of that joining of that actually love that you fall into when you're vulnerable, when you let go of the defenses of what's between you and your brother, like that's what, the fear of intimacy is really all about. It's not fear of physical intimacy. It's not about fear of being naked with someone physically or anything like that. It all has, it's this fear of being basically mentally naked, vulnerable, transparent, speaking what's on your heart, being seen truly, not physically, truly seen, being heard. And that's what's the scary part of it. So yeah, I may have more to say, but that's how I felt to kind of start it off because there's been this big, yeah, it's healing. And I feel like it's all phases, all the healing that I've gone through where, you know, there's always a healing of communication of all these different themes, but some seem to be really up at times. And me, it's been really this theme of discernment as well lately. Where, <laughs> yeah, just this theme of discernment, <laughs> which I'll maybe just move through and then... <laughs> let Andy speak, but um, yeah, I just wanted to share that lately I've just been noticing where I actually play out being what's called like an unhealed healer, where a brother is going through something and I hear in my mind, oh, I know exactly what to say. I know how to fix this. <laughs> I know how to get them out of this. And really Jesus is saying, no, step back and let me lead the way. You don't know how to fix this. Actually, in the true empathy section, I think it's uh, section one, chapter 16, there's this prayer where he's saying, like, remember this and hold it in your mind whenever you're kind of joining with a brother who's going through something or, you know, when you're holding the space, basically. And, and he says, yeah, the prayer is, I am not alone and I would not intrude the past upon my guest. I have invited him and he is here. I need to do nothing except not to interfere. So it's saying like, you don't know the way, you know, so let me lead the way here. And so for me, it would play out as like just trying to speak or teach basically to the brother, which actually is not called for. Sometimes there can be that sort of assignment, but that's where discernment comes in, where it's like really praying into it. Am I supposed to speak? <laughs> is it actually helpful here? And really waiting for that clear yes. So yeah, I'd say that's been the main theme of the sermon because actually when I speak and it's not given, there's actually a disconnect. Like it's not helpful. It doesn't help me feel more connected, even though it almost seems like this pattern, like, oh, I can say this. Oh, I can say that. It's like, no, it's actually a call for pausing, <laughs> for not speaking and, you know, waiting to see just how it unfolds. Like there's nothing to fix and we're not the healer. The Holy Spirit is. God is, Jesus is. So, yeah. Yeah, it really is purpose is the only choice because I remember so many times, I mean, it's like the ego made up all these relationships and people and bodies all to keep reinforcing its own thought system. And I just remember all the times I would meet up with friends and 
And, you know, it's like, what would we even be talking about? It's like 50% of the time, it was probably about girls. And the other 50%, it was probably about like getting rich or making a lot of money, right? At least that's what it was for me. And it's like, it's really coming down to like, why am I actually talking about this? Like, what's, what's the purpose, like you said? Because yeah, it's like, like let's take the whole girls thing for example and and if maybe if you're female then you're talking about boys or whatever whatever (laughs) we're all talking about when we're in the ego mindset you know it's always like reinforcing some kind of lack or self-concept or goals in the world or something that's really not going to expand the mind beyond its limits at all and um yeah, I just had this dream last night and I thought it was really beautiful. And actually there were like multiple dreams, but just one of them did actually touch on this communication where I was, um, yeah, I was, I was talking with one of my friends from back in high school and uh, he was beginning to talk about girls and, you know, it was like, it was like the past was starting to come up. It was like, okay, now this is how you relate with friends. So now this is, what seems to be coming up in the dream or this is how I used to relate and it was coming up and he was like he was just about to start talking about girls and I was like listen I don't want to talk about this like this is boring and and then that dream kind of ended right there and that was that was just like a beautiful symbol in my mind of like wow you know it's like the communication is really getting to a much higher level it's like these past ways of speaking to each other about all these like meaningless purposeless like egoic things it's it's just not serving anymore and um yeah i just i also had this other dream it was just amazing Uh, it was a different friend from the past and what it was is um yeah it was like he was just he had this call for love and he was telling me how when he was in the classroom and he was taking a test, he would feel all this unworthiness because he was projecting out onto all the other students of how they're all smarter than me and um, they're probably getting this test right and I'm not. And then it went into this thing where um, I was basically telling him, yeah, listen, the ego, the ego has you stuck in this trap. It's like you're setting yourself up to just feel this way every single test. Cause he was saying all, every test I take, it's like, I think everyone's smarter than me. I feel unworthiness. And then I bomb the test and then I'm just stuck in this loop. And, uh, and so, yeah, I was just telling him, yeah, it's like, it's, it's just an ego trap. It's an ego deception. And you just have to really watch those patterns in your mind when you see yourself in these loops and when you're stuck in one of those loops, you really have to question it. Just pause and question. Okay. Um, I seem to be stuck in this loop, but, um, Holy spirit. And actually in the dream, I told him, so what, what do you think is the opposite of the ego? If the ego has you stuck in a trap. And then I was like, okay, it's either, you can call it the Holy spirit, spirit, higher self, um, God, whatever is helpful for you. You just pause in those moments and you just ask for help and try to give that pattern over. And then, and then it was just mind blowing because as soon as I said that, this like rage started to fill his face, like his eyeballs like got really big and like the veins were like, you know, coming out of his face and there was like this intense rage coming out of him. And in that dream, um, at that point I realized, wow, like this is, this is the ego's rage. Like in my mind, I'm just seeing it like seemingly coming out of this character in my dream right now, but this is actually like, I'm literally like confronting the ego right now. And what happened was I just kept looking at him with true vision, with Christ's vision. And then all of a sudden, and his face was still really angry, but I just kept, just kept looking at him and all of a sudden there was like this explosion of light and basically it just like filled the entire screen and it was just light and, and yeah, it was just so beautiful. It was like, there was nothing else. And, um, and then the dream ended and I just saw that also as like this beautiful symbol because I seem to get stuck in these loops of, um, this like victim identity and, 
we had a Saturday movie night last night at La Casa and David kept saying product of the world. Like when you're with the ego, you think that you're a product of the world. And that's basically the same as victimization. And I've noticed these loops in my mind of um, like things seem to happen. And then all of a sudden I seem to think I'm like this victim. And then I project that outward on, onto whoever I think it's their fault whether it's characters in the dream or whether it's God or authority figures, or it could be anyone. And then, um, so basically what I was telling my friend in that dream was exactly what I needed to hear, which is, I mean, the whole point of these shows. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was just, yeah, it was just such a beautiful symbol to me to see like, wow, okay, we're really starting to see these like ego deceptions and not really fall for them anymore. And especially if like, if the desire in the mind is for awakening, then you start to see everything that happens to you in your life that seems to happen to you in your life. You see them all as opportunities to release blocks in your mind that you don't want anyways. But when your desire is for something in the world, then you don't see it that way. Then you see it more as like, yeah, I am a victim. I never get what I want in this world. And then you just make up this whole like nonsense story. But, um, but yeah, yeah. I was even like before the show started, I was sitting in the room over there and yeah, I was just having this like beautiful perspective in my mind of like that when, like I said, like when you have that desire for awakening, then you see that all things truly work together for good. Because I was just sitting there meditating and then I noticed, um, um, you know, some people were walking in and out of the room and I saw that temptation right away to see, you know, that I'm a victim. And in the Course in Miracles, it says, uh, beware of the temptation to perceive yourself as unfairly treated. Yeah, that's how it goes, right? Yeah. So <laughs> basically, he's saying it is a temptation to see yourself as a victim. It's not a fact at all. It's a complete temptation. Mm -hmm. And I saw the temptation arise. You know, it seems so silly. It's like, oh, people are walking in when I'm meditating. But it came up and I just saw it. And I was like, oh, I am tempted to think of myself as a victim. But then I went to that perspective of actually, if I'm going for this awakening and I want to wake up, then I actually see everything as helping me to do that and this opportunity right here when this little thought is coming up that i'm a victim because people seem to be interrupting my meditation they're literally walking in so i can see that victim belief come to the surface because otherwise it's hidden so it's like so that i can release it you know that's why they're walking in it's not because they're like some characters outside of me that I have no control over and I'm such a victim and poor me. Oh, things just seem to happen to me. I'm just some like product of the world basically. And yeah, I think, I think it all goes very deep because even today is like, you know, it's father's day, but it's like, who is your father? You know, like, who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> I love <you. laughs> David. I think it's, called who's your daddy on youtube no, no. but yeah it's like who created you it's like <laughs> it's like this whole world is a complete deception where it's like we made up the world the ego made the world and then made up all the characters in it including your biological parents and then says yeah my biological parents created me so i'm a product of the world and that that just keeps the whole victim identity in place keeps the whole world in place and keeps the authority problem in place. And so we really want to get back to actually my father, capital F is my creator. And um, I know my parents, my <laughs> biological parents are watching. So yeah. big shout out to them. <laughs> Hi, veterans. <laughs> love it. <laughs> well, I love it. Cause you know, it's that authority problem, right? Like, you know, did I create myself or was I created by God? It's like, and if I create myself, like if I'm a product of the world and then there's anger, it's like, well, you brought me into this world, parents. Like, 
you know, it's your fault. You shouldn't have, you know, procreated. <laughs> and brought me in. It's all your fault. You know, you can, it's a definition of being a victim. But if you're source, you know, if you were created by God, you know, loving God by source, and you're not of this world, you are no longer a product, and there can no longer be really this projection of blame onto any of the characters. And one of the things that was coming to my mind just around that um, with the theme of communication was, uh, I just remember one meeting in Mexico, and, and I do actually, in case if anyone is interested, I do feel to open it up after this, uh, just a minute or two, to see if anyone has any question or anything they want to share with us. Uh, we're trying this out on this show, and if it feels good, we may continue it this way, um, experimenting. <laughs> but uh, I just remember this one meeting I was having with, I believe it was Jason, and uh, when I was there in Mexico with you, Andy, and we were all at the lunch table, and I was just sharing this, this feeling like, oh, man, this meeting I had, uh, I think it was the day before, it just uh, didn't go well, and I, I just don't feel like, you know, there was a good connection or clear communication and all this stuff. And I remember the one thing he asked me is like, well, did you say that? Did you speak it? You know, and I just thought, I was like, huh, no, no. <laughs> and I could just see, cause the teaching of that was like really projection and this sort of thing is, is almost, it's basically impossible if you communicate. You only kind of go into projection when, you're like you don't communicate and then basically you're desiring to be a victim because you're like, well, they didn't, you know, it didn't go the way I want. And like, I think it should have been this way. And even if really it is all about letting it all go and be, but we have to work with where we're at. And instead of going into this thing of just being passively basically aggressive and projecting, there's this thing of you can speak just, you know, even like uh, if I'm meditating, just like you were saying, if I feel God, I could say like, Hey, I'm meditating here. Could you please not come in unless you feel like you really need to? You know, you can speak what's on your heart. You don't have to be right about it. But you, you need to allow yourself to speak. It's never about really changing the form or changing the behavior, but it is about speaking what's on your heart and not basically falling back into a victim identity. You know, it's like we can speak. <laughs> so, yeah, I bet Jason's there. So, love you, Jason. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, if anyone wishes to uh, share something, a question that's really on their heart, uh, based off anything we've spoken about, or even if it's not, just anything that's on your heart, yeah, we'd love to open it up. You can either raise your hand through Zoom, or someone maybe will look through the, the windows to see if anyone's physically raising their hand, but we'll just kind of give it a minute or two to see if anyone's yeah, I, I just want to add, I think we only have about five six minutes left so quick question <laughs> yeah, yeah. questions yeah okay we have some yeah. mary, williams. mary williams hi i'm up here hi mary this is so perfect um i, I have to stop and think what is my question um, <laughs> Because um, I have a recent incident with a daughter-in-law in which we were planning a big garage sale and the communication totally broke down on my part. Um, and so there was a big upset. And, uh, and she's a new daughter-in-law of, of like two months. And so obviously we both want to, you know, reach out to each other and communicate. Um, and uh, so... Um, I, I don't know what to say. This is so perfect because I've been diving into this and diving into this and, and having conversations in, in my head, making her wrong, you know, like, whoa, what is she? I loved what one of you said about stepping into this or recognizing that that person showed up to uh, give me the opportunity to deal with this. And the opportunities have been ongoing with her. <laughs> so it's perfect. So anyway, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I love what Andy shared. He actually skipped two shows ahead to Laverne's show. He did a little Levels of Mind right there. <laughs> Brought it all back that it's all for, for him. And it, yeah, it is always our, our lesson. And what I was just thinking was uh, there's this movie called I Heart Huckabee. And 
not that this is necessarily your situation, but I've seen myself in this where in this community, it seems like we're paired up with certain ones at certain times, or there's ones that just seem to, that are living with us. And it's the perfect constellation because they're like our exact triggers. And I forget in this moment, I, I, I used to know the name, but I think his name is Brad in the movie. And it's basically like there was this term that we would use sometimes like, oh, they're your Brad character, where it's like everything they do just seems to trigger you. It's like everything about them, it, it's really not personal, but it's like everything about them just triggers everything that's really hidden in, in our mind. And they're our Brad character and they're a total gift. And in this movie, it turns into like there's a total healing from that, but it has to be kind of faced. It has to be looked at. And, and I think in that movie, there's quite a bit of kind of communication, although mostly projection at the beginning. <laughs> it was just about kind of seeing what's, um, yeah, what is it that's getting triggered and getting kind of underneath all of that. And yeah, some of the details of the movie are slipping from me, but I just remember that being quite profound for me and very applicable, like with yeah, different ones. It would just be like, this is a perfect opportunity to, you know, to watch your mind and see what comes up. You know, there's, there's no accident that these certain ones in our lives are, are brought to us when they are. You know, your passage through time and space is not at random, Jesus tells us. <laughs> and it's like, great, okay, I'll use this. It's given. <laughs> I can pour my full heart into this and be gentle, you know, and, and not have to like force anything. Just it's being intuitive. Like, is it helpful for me to say something? Maybe I'm to give a hug, you know, maybe, you know, go for a walk, talk, call, text, whatever it is, is, you know, it's just following, it's following the love. I think it was, I was at the monastery recently and Jane Marie reminded me, uh, she's stewarding out there. Um, and she reminded me of this one line, um, I forget who it's from, but it's, it was like, love and do what you will. You know, it becomes that simple. It's like, okay, let me just work through whatever blocks are right here in my mind, whether through spirit or levels of mind or joining with a trusted mighty companion, someone I feel like I can just speak to release, you know, not speak to keep. Um, and, you know, once I'm back in touch with that, that connection, that love, that's where I can then really follow, you know, it's, you know, as long as I'm in that connection, then whatever I do from there will be a gift. I really feel like it's that simple. Do you have anything to share real quick, Andy? <laughs> we have two minutes. Um, no, I don't think so. I think uh, I just got the one minute signal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just wrap it up. Um, just thank you guys so much for being on our show today and happy Father's Day to our, our true father. And, and we have a really exciting day today, the rest of the day, uh, some amazing shows, Francis, Jason, David, Laverne, and some other ones. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. And thank you guys for being here today. And we'll see you next time. And I do want to just quickly say that uh, we are interested in, potentially keeping these more interactive. So if, you, if you're inspired, please write to us or, just, you know, just stay open for our next show. And yeah, we'd love to keep opening up for people to share and ask questions or anything. So thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah.